All right, let's look at the last part of uh, Standard 4 here, and let's finish up this Re American Revolution standard. Uh, the student will identify the ideological, we did that, military and diplomatic uh, aspects of the American Revolution. In this part, we're going to talk a little bit about military and a little bit about diplomatic aspects of the American Revolution. Let's go ahead and, and hit that. Uh, that'll be Standard 4D. Explain the role of geography at the Battle of Yorktown, the role of Lord Cornwallis, and the Treaty of 1783. A uh, little background here, we talked about Marquis de Lafayette and, and Benjamin Franklin uh, helping one of, uh, and you, uh, working together to get the French to help us. Is, is this guy, Marquis de Lafayette, is going to plan out this battle uh, of Yorktown that's going to end the American Revolutionary War. And he was instrumental in getting free, uh, uh, French reinforcements, meaning army and navy for us, and, uh, and he's a French aristocrat, and he's going to work with George Washington, he's going to be a commander of some of Washington's troops, he's going to suffer at Valley Forge there. Uh, the Battle of Yorktown in 1781, uh, General Lord uh, Charles Earl Cornwallis uh, is going to be surrounded and he's going to be trapped or captured uh, by the colonial, George Washington's colonial forces with the help of the French forces. Uh, and uh, Lord Cornwallis or General Cornwallis was the commander or general for the British Army. And his capture is very significant uh, there at the Battle of Yorktown. He, he, his capture is going to force Parliament and King George, uh, King George III, to negotiate a peace with the United States, and that peace is going to be that Treaty of Paris, 1783. We're going to get to here in a minute. So the geography. Let's get, look at this map and look at the geography real quick. Here's the York River. Here, uh, the York River uh, flows up from the Chesapeake Bay, up, uh, up down in this area over here. Uh, across the way is Jamestown but on on the James River over here but here's the York River here's Yorktown let's go there real quick let's use our map Google map let's, there's Trenton there there's the Delaware Bay but here's the huge bay here the Chesapeake Bay we've gone here before if you see Williamsburg here uh, this river here's the James River we talked about Jamestown here on this let's zoom in there this big swamp here Jamestown island there. There's a state park, but across the way there's Williamsburg. And then if we go across the way over here, here's the York River over here. There it is. Okay. And let's go down here and let's look right here at Yorktown. Here's Yorktown. Here's Gloucester Point. There's the York River. Let's follow that river out here in the bay. There's the Chesapeake Bay. We can go out here and go out into the Atlantic Ocean here. So let's go back there again. There's Yorktown. If you look at the geography there, which looks much like our map, there's Gloucester Point. Here's Yorktown here. So let's let's return back. All right, here's Gloucester Point. Here's Yorktown. Here's the York River. Uh, in red, we see British forces. These these red blocks are where the British forces were under the command of General Cornwallis. So he is stationed there at Yorktown. And what's going to happen is while he's there, the French fleet is going to come up the York River and block him off from heading across the York and escaping. And then, right here on Gloucester Point, coming in this way, in black we see the American Colonial Army, or soldiers, and then in purple we see the French soldiers. You see that? And they have them flanked in and captured there. And on the river, they have them blocked in there. And if we look over here at all this purple, th these are French soldiers. 
these are the French lines over here. It's going to capture and, and capture and hold them in here, keep them from running this way and escaping. And then over here in the black, we see the American colonial forces under Washington. They're going to come in this way, and they're going to totally surround George Cornwallis at Yorktown and choke him off there and make him surrender. So they capture him pretty much. That's how geography works into it, and that's what we're supposed to learn, okay? Now, let's remember here that this could not have happened without the help of Marquis de Lafayette and Benjamin Franklin getting us some French alliance and assistance. And uh, if you recall, we talked about how the French, uh, the French army was going to help us, and the French navy was going to help us. And if we look back here, we see the French army over here, and the French army here, and the French navy out here. French navy is also going to be down at Chess at the Chesapeake Bay, blocking it all, and keep keeping Cornwallis's troops from getting resupplied or uh, to help them escape. So, without the French fleet here and the French soldiers here and this French flank over here, we we would not have been able to capture Cornwallis there in Yorktown and end the American Revolutionary War. That's the point and the significance of this assistance that we got from the French. Now, a different map shows, uh, here's, uh, let's see, let's see where we at here. All right, here's some, here's the James River, and here's the York River over here. There's Yorktown. There's the French frigates right there on the York River, and if we look at the French fleet out here with De Grasse, there's a bunch of French ships out there. That's a French navy. Here's some uh, De Barris with the uh, French ships of the line blocking the bay off. And here's some French frigates here on the James River to make sure no British ships comes in here to resupply or help uh, Cornwallis escape. So we see the French Navy was instrumental in blocking off the Chesapeake Bay, James River, and the York River to help us capture. Uh, General Cornwallis. So that's how the geography plays in it, and then that's how the assistance and alliance from the French help us win uh, this battle of Yorktown. And there's a portrait of a George Washington accepting a sword from General Cornwallis, but he actually, Cornwallis actually did not turn his sword over to Washington. It was his first in command that brought it, but that's supposed to be General Cornwallis there. So what was the significance or importance of the battle or, or capture of Cornwallis is that, uh, you know, French and American allies together capture Cornwallis at Yorktown. This is going to have an effect because it's going to, it's going to make the king, George III, and Parliament of Great Britain, it's going to force them to negotiate a peace. And since it's French and American, they're going to no negotiate a peace that is very, uh, very, amendable to and the Americans are going to be very good for them okay and so in this they have the treaty the the piece that they negotiate is referred to the Treaty of Paris 1783 because that's what we need to talk about this Treaty of Paris notice that the Treaty of Paris 1763 ended the French and Indian War that was 20 years before don't get these confused the Treaty of Paris 1783 is going to end the American Revolution. And, and what's the result of that Treaty of Paris 1783 is that all this land in pink is going to be owned by the United States. The United States are going to own all this land in pink. In other words, all lands east of the Mississippi River, but we notice that Spain gets control of Florida down here. So, and, and another big thing, this, this Treaty of Paris is going to do is end the Revolutionary War, but it's going to force Great Britain to acknowledge our independence. You know, uh, a lot of people think just because we declared independence mean, means that we were independent in 1776. We were an independent nation then, no. Because Great Britain did, did not acknowledge our independence. They only, Great Britain only officially recognizes us as an independent nation, as the United States of America in the Treaty of Paris 1783, and that's extremely important to understand here, is that in this Treaty of Paris 1783, we actually do get our independence from Great Britain officially. There's that word, officially. 
in the Treaty of Paris, 1783. Here's the second page of the document. Some of these names down here is John Adams, Benjamin Franklin. There's their seals. And here's a portrait of the signing of the Treaty of Paris, 1783. This is John Jay here. He's going to be, a, when our government's made after, in the Constitution, he's going to be our first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Here's John Adams, second President of the United States. He will become... And then there's Benjamin Franklin we talked about who have to get his French assistance in a foreign alliance and also known for individualism and social mobility. There he is, Benjamin Franklin. And Henry Lawrence also went to uh, work out and negotiate this treaty and sign it. And then William Temple Franklin is the grandson of Benjamin Franklin. And William Temple Franklin was a, uh, uh, an, he was an assistant to Franklin as a ambassador to France for the United States. Uh, I don't know who this fellow is down here because the original portrait of this was was painted by Benjamin West and uh, these men sit for this portrait to be painted and the British officials refused to sit for the for the picture the portrait to be painted so they wouldn't around. And so it was unfinished. Benjamin West never finished it. Okay. Uh, I hope we met our objective. Let's look and see if we did. The student will identify ideological, military, and diplomatic aspects. Military and diplomatic. And we talked about the role of geography at the Battle of Yorktown. Let's look at that geography here. You know, with the French forces and all surrounding and capturing them. And here, uh, showing the Navy, the French Navy, and how it helped block off the Chesapeake Bay and James and York. And then, uh, let's look back. It says the Battle of Yorktown, we talked about, and the Lord, uh, the role of Lord Cornwallis in the Treaty of Paris, 1783. Lord Cornwallis' role is we're going to capture him, and then we're going to force King and Parliament to negotiate peace, and then that peace is going to be the Treaty of Paris, 1783. And in the Treaty of Paris, 1783, we get all this lands east of the Mississippi River all the way back over here but we don't get Florida and there's the Treaty of Paris 1783 the second page all right I hope that helps